You must receive the Holy Spirit. You must be filled. You must be baptized with my Holy Ghost. Crowd for my spirit. And you must travail for new birth. You must cry out, give me children, lest we die, Lord. Lord, we not only want to know you, we want somebody else to know you. We want men, women, boys, and girls to know you. And Lord, you said in Acts 1 and 8, when you fill us with your power after your Holy Ghost, your person comes on us. You said we'd be both witnesses unto you. And then, Lord, you list four different things. You said Jerusalem and Samaria. That would be the Middle East, that region in that day and that time. But you went on and said to the uttermost parts of the world. You said Judea, Samaria, Jerusalem. And then you said the uttermost parts of the world. Jerusalem and Judea would have been among your own. Samaria, the uttermost parts of the world would have been among the Gentiles, those who worship false deities and gods. So Lord, I thank you. This gospel is not just for people we know. It's for people we don't know. It's not just for good people because good people die and go to hell too, but God, it's for the wicked people. It's even for the people that's demon-possessed. It's even for the enemies of the gospel if they'll repent and believe. So Lord, we pray as a reward of your suffering and a reward to the labor that is not in vain, the travail that's not in vain for you, Lord, that we travail and work and labor. Lord, give us souls, not only of the good man and the good woman, but give us the souls of the demon-possessed and the wicked and those that are bound with abomination who can't get saved until demons get cast out of them. Holy Ghost, we want to be witnesses unto you. And Holy Ghost, I know it don't matter how good a sermon I can bring. That ain't what draws people. It don't matter if you can get a mass choir and a six to seven piece musical orchestra with Musicians playing skillfully on instruments. That ain't what draws people. Holy Ghost, it's you. Man can draw people and satisfy their appetite and get a crowd, but only you can convert somebody. Only you can bring a soul to the foot of the cross and transform them with the truth. Only you can save. They ain't but one that can save. And Holy Ghost, I'm not here with a gimmick. I'm just here with raw God. Just God in the raw. behind. I cry out to you, draw the mighty. As Job 24 and 22 says, draw the mighty with your power. Draw those the enemy has mightily bound and says, I'll never let them go. Draw them by your power. Your power stronger. Your power stronger than witchcraft. Holy Ghost, you're stronger than the witch. You're stronger. Yes, you are. You can make the witch switch. You're stronger than the curses. Oh, yes, you are. You're stronger than the witchcraft. You're stronger than the warlock. You're stronger than the Satanist. You're stronger than the drugs. You're stronger than the rebellion. Yes, you are. You're stronger than the alcohol. You're stronger than the adultery and fornication. You're stronger than the homosexuality. You're stronger than all that stuff, that wickedness and that darkness. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, let there come a redeeming revival. Let there come a move of your spirit in every church. God, awaken the church. Fill us with the Holy Ghost so you can add to the church. Not a, You're not the one adding Jezebel's children. You're not adding uh, the 
false brethren and the false convert because that's what the false doctrine and the false truth sayer produces. But no, Lord, you add lives that are transformed. They're not in and out, up and down. No, Lord, they get saved and they walk with you. They leave the darkness behind. Lord, that's what we're crying out to see in this hour. In only you, Holy Spirit. It's only your power. It's only your anointing that can change a person drastically. Because a leopard can't change his spots. How then can a man that's accustomed to evil change his ways? Jeremiah 13. 33 declares, and Lord, we know a leopard can't change her spot, and that's just simply saying a man cannot change himself. But there's one that can. What's impossible with men is not impossible with God. Lord, I pray for the saints and with the saints tonight, awaken sons and daughters, adult sons and daughters, awaken grandchildren. Waken the seed of the righteous. The seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Proverbs 11 and 21. Lord, I thank you. What a promise is that? You said you'd deliver our seed. Come on, crowd to God. Come on, travail, mama. You birth them once, birth them again. Birth them in the spirit. Cry to God. Call their name out right now. Call their names out. Call their names out. Call their names out. Call, don't you dare stop praying for them now. God said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll be saved, you and your house. Acts 16, 31, believe. You'll be saved, you in your house hallelujah Lord I thank you for saving households you save Noah's family save ours Lord save our families Lord save the children save the little ones Lord from the Satanism that's become acceptable in the hour we live the perverted cults the brainwashing the double mindedness and the double standards Lord has infiltrated many of your churches people stand in your house and worship with amazing grace on Sunday morning and by Monday they already listen to the hellish music of the world again you said in Song of Solomon 7 and 5, it's better to hear the rebuke of the wise than to listen to songs of fools. A fool returns to his vomit as a dog does to his vomit. Proverbs 26 and 11. I mean, you're trying to worship a God on Sunday morning with his sound. And then they go back to the sounds of the flesh real quick when they leave the sanctuary. No wonder they can't walk with him. Because blessed are the people that know the joyful sound. For they'll walk, O Lord, the lot of your countenance. Psalms 89, 15. It has shocked me. I've never seen so many Pentecostal and named churches and people and people that stand on the platform and lead people in worship. They think nothing of listening to Michael Jackson and nothing to listening to all these songs of the world and the lust of the flesh uh, and that show dirty dancing moves and, and all this corruption. Lord, on Sunday, trying to lead God's people. And then they have an appetite for the lust songs of the world God that's double mindedness that grieves your Holy Ghost that ain't right and that sure ain't Pentecost the first thing they'd scream out at somebody like me they would say that's legalism you call it what you want hallelujah but Holy Ghost I don't want nothing to do with anything that is not your holiness because that is your standard yes it is hallelujah Lord how in the world can we follow you if we're not willing to shun what is opposed to you God sanctify our appetites in the spirit If you'll listen to that, you'll do what they're doing eventually. You'll drink what they drink. You'll smoke what they smoke. As long as you keep sucking on that 
electric cigarettes, you will not receive the Holy Ghost either. That stuff you're in hell is more dangerous than smoke itself. You vaping metal. You killing yourself. You don't need a patch. You need to repent. Then you'll get free. Ain't no demons making you go do that. You're going and doing it. You ever surrender, you'll get delivered. He brought them forth out of darkness. He broke their chains asunder, Psalms 107, 14. He can't break nobody's chains until they follow him out of the darkness. You waiting on God to do something and God says, no, you're not. It's finished, John 19 and 30. I'm waiting on you to get up out of the darkness and stop excusing the darkness. Stop making excuses. For Deliverance is one step. You got to follow my ways. You got to do what I say. And I said, leave it. Well, I can't. Yeah, you can if you'll do what he says. Because he'll only empower those that'll do it. There is no power to those that are sitting around thinking God's going to do everything. He already did it at the cross. Now you got to step. You got to follow the lead. And if you'll follow him, he'll bring you out of the darkness. He'll break the chains into you. You must surrender. with the Holy Ghost why should you fill the house with new birth if the house ain't filled with the Holy Ghost for as soon as Zion travailed she brought forth her children Isaiah 66 8. tonight May 18th next Thursday May 25th next month June 1st June 8th June 15th these are all Thursday nights it's thirsting for God Thursday, but it's thirsting for God travailing Thursday. Jesus said, can't you watch me wait one hour? Somebody say one hour. One hour. Just one hour. We have literally been praying. One hour and probably five minutes. You can turn that music down. So. Hallelujah. Lord, that's what you told us last Sunday night to do on these next few Thursdays. Lord, I know it's your plan, and I know, I know, God, I know the sluggard and the slothful spiritually, they have no appetite for prayer. It's not attractive. I know it's not. But Holy Spirit, it's attractive to you. And that's what you're attracted to. So God, I can only preach and say what you say. I can't help what people do thereafter. But Holy Spirit, I'm going to do what you said. We're going to come in here and we're going to watch and pray for an hour. It ain't that hard. Ain't nothing hard in the Holy Ghost. Ain't nothing hard in the Spirit. Lord, the church should be known for praying more than she does anything. You said to seek and save that which is lost, Luke 15, 10. Lord, that don't mean just go look for them. That means you got to pray first. What are we going to do with them when we find them if we ain't been seeking God and got filled with the Holy Spirit? Lord, and wake this sleeping church up. God, there's a lot in this house that are sleeping. 
Lord, and I know they learned their art of sleep from wherever they went to church in the past. Some of them did. God, wake them up before it's too late. Because you're going to grow your house. Yes, you are. Lord, you're going to birth people and some's going to lose their places. Some's going to miss you and Lord, they're going to miss what it is you wanted them to do. Because Lord, you said in your word in Luke 10 too. The harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray ye to the Lord of the harvest. Verse 3, that he might send forth laborers into that harvest. Why? To reap it. Lord, who are you saying, I'm going to send you into the harvest to reap it? The ones that are praying to the Lord of the harvest. It ain't the ones that's playing around with the Lord of the harvest, but the ones that are praying to the Lord of the harvest. That's the ones you're going to use to reap the harvest. The rest are going to miss you and they're going to miss the harvest. And the harvest is souls. And God, according to Ezekiel, Ezekiel said, those that miss the soul, that miss the harvest, Lord, the blood of those souls will drip from their hands before you one day. Lord, I don't want my hands dripping with blood because I was afraid to say what you said to say. Lord, I don't want my hands dripping with blood of men's souls because I was too busy to take off from what I think I can't take off from, but it's so easy for me to take off from church. And it's so easy for me to take off from the house of prayer. God, you about to replace those people. You ain't going to let me carry this burden like this continually. No, you're not. And Lord, I say it just that bold. You ain't going to allow it. You'll either help me or it'll destroy me one. But I will not stop. I will not quit. God, you know I am tired. You know I am tired. But I am not tired of your work. Though I'm tired while doing it. I will not retire. I will not compromise. If I go to the grave, I will not compromise. Lord, I know you ain't going to let me bear it alone. To bear it. You ain't going to let me travail alone. Lord, you told me out in this backyard of this church this afternoon when I was walking and praying. Turn, you said, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain to build it. Psalms 127, verse 1. Lord, as I turn around on that wet ground, soggy, and I, from the back of this church, was looking where I had to find a leak. There's a leak back there, and Lord, you should, that's what I was out there looking at. And Lord, when I saw the steeple from the backyard, I heard that scripture, and you said, my anointed, this labor has never been in vain, because it's not yours, it's mine. You assured me standing in that soggy backyard looking at what leak I'm about to have to repair. You told me your labor's not in vain because it's not your house, it's mine. And I will not always allow you to bear and travail with the weight of what you travail and bear. I wouldn't always have to do it that way. That I wouldn't have to bear all that I bear. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm not complaining. It's a worthy bearing. It's heavy. But you're enough. You're enough. Faithful is he that called you, who will also do it. 1 Thessalonians 5, 24. And Lord, everybody's welcome. Yes, they are. 
Lord, we will never compromise with sin. I will not do it. The sinner's welcome, but we will not compromise with the sin. And Lord, you know who you want to save. I've seen you save people in this altar. I've seen you save people in the yard. I've seen you save people online. And Lord, everybody's welcome. But Lord, we ain't satisfied just seeing more church folk. We want to see sinners saved, sanctified, demons evicted, and them filled with the Holy Ghost. The Lord, the church must be filled with the Holy Ghost before you can add to the church souls. And we pray you fill us who want you. You don't fill us, Lord, for a church service. You fill us to serve the church and to do the work of the ministry and to occupy till you come. Luke 19, 13. We didn't come for a service tonight. We come to serve. We come to serve you prayer. We come to serve in the name of Jesus we cry out. Lord, you said the prayer of the upright is your delight. Proverbs 15 and 8. Ain't nothing makes you smile any more than when the saints cry out to you in the honor of the Lord. Hallelujah. But Lord, if we turn away our ear from hearing the law, then even our prayer becomes an abomination. Proverbs 29, verse 8. Lord, if we don't do what you say for us to do when we pray, you even call that an abomination. So Lord, we must obey. Or when we pray, it'll be vain. Help us do and follow the instruction to do what you say to do. Because that is the first step to discipleship until people can follow the leader, till they can follow the simple instruction be faithful you cannot trust them with anything else not even a soul so Lord get this house ready to reap the harvest we must receive the Holy Ghost before we can receive or reap the harvest if we're gonna reap the harvest we got to receive the Holy Ghost with hands lifted Holy Ghost we welcome you tonight we speak your blood Lord, I thank you. You're a God of signs and wonders and miracles. You're our Jehovah Rapha. You said, I'm the Lord that heals you. Exodus 15 to 26. Thank you for healing bodies tonight. Touch the flesh of your saints. Touch them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Make them well for your glory. And Holy Spirit, you take the offering up tonight. You collect the tithes tonight. You pay the church off you told me in 2019 along with that truce breaker and you know where he is and who he is what you were going to do Lord you didn't lie then and you don't lie now no matter the truce breakers no matter the men's names that are with my name at that bank and mine's the only name still left but it ain't never been by itself because the name of Jesus he's the Lord it's his it's yours Holy Spirit and God I thank you I got the note already written it's in my computer I even got one copy already printed out for that hour when all this is paid for why should you pay for it if we ain't here for souls? 
Lord, you only support that that's supporting and seeking what you died for. Lord, we must see souls. I thank you for those that raised their hand Sunday and said they wanted to give their life to Jesus. Thank you for filling Brother Rob with the Holy Ghost. But Lord, I thank you there's more. There's more you want to save. There's more you want to fill with the Holy Ghost. And God, how can we be a soul winning church if we ain't a Holy Ghost baptized church? So Holy Ghost, we pray two prayers. Fill the church with your spirit and give us souls. Give us new birth. In the church of the living God said in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You said a wise man wins souls. Proverbs 11, verse 30. Grant us your wisdom, God, that comes from above. Wisdom when to say yes and wisdom when to say no. Wisdom when to speak. Wisdom when not to. Because every person's different. Every soul's different. Use this Holy Spirit. Use this house. Use this platform. Deliver many more, I pray. I thank you for what you've done up to this point. But God, there's so much more you want to do. But you can't do it with the cozy and the complacent. You cannot do it through the dull of hearing. You can only do it through the hungry and the thirsty and those that are willing to travail, that are willing to labor in pain. Lord, I labor in you is not vain. But you never said our labor in you would be without pain because travail brings pain. And that's when many, Lord, go missing when it ain't convenient and it's too painful. The Lord, the old saying says, no pain, no gain. And Lord, that's just what it is. It's looking at you on the cross. There was no gain without your pain. The Lord, until the church realizes like a mother, Without the pains of travail, there can be no gain of a new life. We got to stop giving in to our pain. Now, I'm not just speaking of physical things. I'm talking about the things that are inconvenient, that pain us. That's just stretching us. It may require of us to do something beyond our convenience. The normal. Lord, we got to be willing to stretch in the pain if we're going to see you bring forth the gain that's promised. Hallelujah. So I thank you, Holy Ghost, for the faithful tonight. You said they would abound with blessing, Proverbs 28, 20. Lord, I ain't preaching for a crowd online. I know the more I preach, the less popular I become in these last hours. But I will not change the message to entertain the itchy ear. I preach for one, the risen one and the one you want me to reach. And God, I hear from those ones all the time. And I will not shun to say what you say. Hallelujah. Because I don't want to miss that true conversion. Hallelujah. I don't want to grow a church with Jezebel because she knows how to do it. That demon knows how to grow a church. She does it through soothsaying and compromise and it calls, laces it with the statement of love and compassion. But Holy Ghost, you do it your way. That way when people get saved, they really get delivered. It's only the Holy Spirit. No man can call Jesus Lord except by the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 12, 3. So we praise you tonight and we agree, Spirit of Truth. We didn't pray in vain. We didn't come in vain. We didn't preach in vain. 
We didn't close our eyes for over an hour in vain. We did not labor in prayer because Colossians 4.12, Paul said, I labor for you in my prayers. Prayer, real prayer is a labor. It's a travail. It ain't easy. But Lord, I thank you, none of it's in vain. Though it comes with pain often, it's not in vain. God, those are the ones you said, I'm going to let you reap the harvest. God, entrust us with the harvest, I pray.